Alright, so I gave you guys a head start. Let's start, let's start off here with number three, we're finding inverses. Um, what's the first step of finding inverses? Twist the x and y, right? So this is a function notation. This happens to be a function of h. Uh, so I would switch that h of x, which stands for y. I'll make that into an x. Everything else will be the same, and then we're asking an x for a y. Now we need to solve for y, so we don't have to isolate. So what will be the first step there? Solve for y. You cannot solve for y here, so it's plus 2. So you got double minus 2 first. You can get uh, x minus 2 is equal to 4 times the standard y plus 2. Uh, now, probably should be better off. Think of this as x minus 2 over 1. You can only cross multiply when you have only a fraction on the set. So there can't be anything else there. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't distribute it. Uh, that's the more rough to describe here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and say x minus 2 times negative y. I'm not going to spoil that. The reason why is because I, I don't want the x's and y's to mix. So what I would just do next is what I write x minus 2. The derivative of that parenthesis plus the opposite multiplying. And then dividing. So I have a negative y plus 2 is equal to x minus 2. What's the next step? Get rid of the 2. Minus 2 minus Nothing I have, so I can say that negative y is equal to 4 over x minus 2, and then what's the last step? Get rid of this. How do you change the sign? Uh, negative You could, a lot of people like to divide by negative formula. That's a good fraction there. Yeah, yeah multiply by negative. That's called the multiplication property of negative 1. If you just multiply everything by negative 1, you change the sign. So if you want positive y, it's equal to For negative, it's a fraction. In uh, function notation, since this function began known as h, so I would write h inverse of x equal to negative 4 over x minus 2. Let's skip number four, because number four is kind of the exact same thing. It's just that's a problem of fractional function. Um, I, I want to try to do a variety. So uh, let's, let's skip five. Even though five is kind of it, let's call it a similar function. Similar, but they give it a little different name. So we're going to have that question here. This, this function is called f. Let's first change the x and the y. I would say x is equal to negative 4 over y minus 2. What was the first step here? Add the 2 and then substitute. So we'll go ahead and start it up up here. So then x uh, plus 2 is equal to negative 4 over y. What would you do next? Cross multiply. You would cross multiply. You gotta figure out what to do with that negative. So I would just leave the negative uh, in the numerator with the four. So when I multiply one times negative four, I would get negative four. So I would get y over, I'm sorry, y times x plus two is equal to negative four. Cross multiply. There it is, it's a good thing. And then get this. There it is, I 
Bastard. meeting yesterday we were going over some of the stuff on the quiz uh these next few you can expect to see some of them you don't want to pay attention to this are there any questions on the one above all right so state if these functions are inverse and verify meaning we show how you would know and it's going to be pretty much worded very similar it's going to say something like so it word or how do you prove to say if two functions are inverse just to well, you could, but you have to do that both ways. Or just one word number for x. I'm looking for one word. And, then, what, and, and, and uh, I was specifically told in the meeting yesterday that like what you just said would not work. It, 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 like, as far, it's not going to be enough for justification. You have to show for the PAKS uh, it, 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 the standards that they're going to teach you. Uh, you have to do it in a way that I'm not going to point out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, compose. You have to compose the function. So now here's how it works with composing. We're, we're asking a yes or no question. Okay? If these functions are inverse, yes or no. If the answer is going to be a yes, you have to compose it both ways. So like here on this first one, uh, we have to find f of g and g of f in, in order to be able to prove a yes. Um, if it's going to be uh, a no, it's just to fail it once. And what do we mean by fail or like pass fail or is it really cool? Let's see if we end up with the original answer. 
the original input here, the rule for these is x. So when you compose them, you should end up with x. Let's first find g and f. And I'm going to get f and plug it up in, into g. So this will be 5 times 5 times x times negative 1 plus 1 times x minus the extra 10 over 2. This does look like a complex fraction because I put a fraction into a fraction. Victor, look, all I did was I took out this x that was here and I replaced it with the output from f. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was actually, I thought, I thought that would happen. Alright. Whatever. Um, first step. Yeah, let's distribute first. So we're going to have to see if we get negative 5 plus 5 over 2x minus 10 and all of that over 2. And then. Yeah, combined my terms would work well. Um, so that would be 5 over 2x minus 15 over x, which is now we're in sphere thinking of your multiple fractions. What is dividing always the same as? Dividing is not the same as subtracting. Very good. Multiply by reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of 2? One half, so um, this would be the same thing as saying one half times 5 over 2x minus 15, which clearly is not going to give us this x. I get 5 over 4x minus 15 over 2. I did not just, just end up with x, so this has already failed the composition. I already know this answer here is going to be no. The number 7 was well, not in the When I composed them, I did not end up with x. By comparison, let's do number eight. Number eight looks like it's going to work out against the right. All right, I'll just do number eight on the side. Uh, let's start off composing this uh, H at F of X. It doesn't matter which one we pick up. So let's pick F and plug it into H. Instead of that X there, I would write the 4X plus 5. Then I would write the minus 5 right afterwards, and we'll be which uh, gives me that when I go to parentheses, it's 4x plus 5 minus 5 over 4. The 5's cancel, so it's 4x divided by 4. Yeah. But that's not enough to prove their inverses. Once it works one way, now it has to work the other way too. Now we got to do uh, that and that H. Now what I want to do is get this output from H and plug it into that X there. So four times X minus five over four plus an extra. What do I do first there? Well, uh, kind of, it's not really distributing, it's multiplying, because what's going to happen is these, these four are going to cancel. Times four divided by four cancel. So we just end up with x minus five plus five, which also cancels. So notice how both ways, when you compose them, you ended up with x. So that's enough to prove that you have to there. X minus 5 plus 5, and then I canceled out. Negative 5 plus 5 canceled out. So. Very 
Whatever you input first, if you're inputting an X, so you have to input the X. If you're inputting like a three, you have to end up with And the only thing is when you start putting in um, constants, that's when you can possibly get errors. So that you're putting in by half a second. Yeah, thank you. So when I just erase, you know, we do, uh, we put I mean, we put this into this, but we didn't end up with Yes, that was enough to prove that we failed it. And when you compose them, you didn't end up with the input. I guess I could bother doing it the other way. But on the second one, the first thing I did was I got F and I plugged it into H. I did end up with the X, so then I had to try doing it backwards. And again, I ended up with just the original input. <laughs> when I say the word inverse, what does the word inverse sound like? Inverse. Like inverse? Not sound, like I'm not talking about literal sound, but like what what do you have a synonym for like inverse? Like, I say the word inverse, what do you think about inverse? Reciprocal, you really think? They can walk around and say literal reciprocal to them? As a reality, most people would say opposite. Inverse sounds like opposite. And I mean, what should opposites do? What do opposites tend to do? Attract. They tend to attract, yeah. Yeah, that they, they would be. Anybody got an inverse? Is it not an inverse? It's not. Larry, if you want. How about 10? Was 10 an inverse? Can I see? Let's do nine first, because nine is pretty obvious. It's not going to be. And then we'll go with ten. Um, so if we can just pick whichever one. Uh, I went over my mistake last time, and I'm. Um, let's, go, let's just go. Let's just go this way. Let's do uh, one page and ten. Hopefully that won't be as complicated. So we'll write four, but then instead of x, what are we going to write? x minus five to the next of plus twenty over three. So we're going to distribute it to 4x minus 20 plus 20. Also, because the 20s cancel, so that's cool. But sadly, I still end up with 4x over 3. Is that the same as the original input? No, I did end up with just an x. You think, you think 10 does work? Hey, it looks like it's going to work for me, but we got to verify. we got to make sure. And I'm all over it. Lucy's not wrong there at all. Lucy's saying no. You have to fight this guy. Alright, so let's compose these next two. Let's go. Uh, let's do F and G first. So I'm going to get G and plug it into F. I need the negative first. Do you remember that negative, Lucy? The negative has to be there. And then I put in the negative 2x minus 4 with now the extra minus 4. And then over 2. Yeah, you got that? Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, so that gives us positive 2x, positive 4, minus 4, over 2. Came to the force cancel. But then now, now we have to compose it the other way. So now let's do G and F of X. Okay, we got you. So now we put F into here. We get negative 2 times negative X minus 4 over 2. 
then also uh, an extra minus four. You get that extra minus four. The, the twos cancel, but the negative distributes um, still to make this positive x positive four and then minus four. It looks like David is correct. All right, now, now here we just have some functional operations. Let's, uh, let's try to do like one of each. Let's do like one composition, uh, one multiplication, one division. Let's do 11. What do they want us to do at 11? Find the Meaning, what, 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 what am I going to do? I mean, what is this age of uh, D? Of it's going to be x squared. If I'm plugging this into both of these x's, we're going to do 3 x squared. 3 x squared. Minus 3 x squared. Minus 3 x squared. Be the best way for you to square three x plus four. Change up the multiplication in four. Just to save time and space, uh, I mean, you can do this the long way on your paper. It's easier to write with pencil than with marker. If you're going to go with nine x squared, twenty uh, four x sixteen, and then when I distribute the negative, I get minus three. And then that, when I combine my terms, 9x squared plus 21x. And then I notice how, because of the variable, it's also set to indicate the domain. What, what's the domain on the composition? Um, yeah, no, no shared operation. Okay, how about 12? What is 12 actually going to do? Yeah, it's asking to divide. Why don't we divide our uh, function by factoring? So let's do uh, g over h. So g goes on top, n squared minus 4n. Can I factor the numerator? Yes, I can factor out the n. This is GCM minus 2. I cannot factor the denominator. Do I have any common factors? Did anything cancel out? No, so really all we do is we just move your factor into simple form. That's the way it would say. You can't simplify that. But, we may need to restrict the domain. Why? So, uh, somebody not named Lucy or uh, David or Alex can tell me what needs to be restricted. How? What, what is the domain not allowed to be? See the what's, what's not allowed to be? Well, not the end. I, I was hoping you would just tell me to be able to
you guys from the third team. This will be the one of the most effective opportunities that John can have. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to tell you here is G at negative 5. That's the closest one, which is negative 5 squared minus 4. Pay close attention to this. This is going to be a silly mistake because they're going to put us. What happens if you square a negative? Yeah, I wonder what they're trying to tell you. You might be getting a positive. Okay, 21. So get that 21.
See how this uh, happens. Let's start the chain. Ready? First off is F of zero. When I plug in F for zero squared plus three times zero, I get zero. All of those cancel out. So right now that zero is and G is going to come in here. So G at zero will be three times zero minus two, which gives me negative two. Who's going to come in here negative two? F8 first, then G8 is going to be 6. F is going to be down, so F is going to be the negative 2. Uh, so negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. That's going to be positive 4 minus 6, which is negative, um, negative 2. Finally, then the last time somebody is going to eat, G is going to be the negative 2. So that's 3 times negative 2 minus 2. Because they're asking us to, to evaluate the inverse at 3, right? When you put a 3 inside there, normally what are we plugging in for? X. But since this is the inverse, I guess theoretically you could just get that 3 and plug it in for the Y here. But the reason I won't do that is because if you pay close attention to the directions, they're asking you to do two things. They want you to first find the inverse and then That's what I'm getting. That's right. When you switch X and Y, Yeah. 
How would we be able to determine if these two are inverses of each other?
and it appears that they are. If you're ever still not sure, maybe, maybe the, the, the diagram is a little fuzzy or something, you can check my points. So like, for instance, I see the point, um, oh, forget, let me see. Is that like zero negative? Uh, that looks like a zero negative three is there. What other point should be there? Negative three, zero. Yeah, negative three, zero. Yeah. And since these are lines, if you can just do that with one more point, uh, that should be enough to prove it. Number 11, we've already done a few of these. If you're going to determine whether or not two functions are inverse of one another, what would you have to do? We did that today about three times. No, four times. Uh, no, one word. Compose. Yes, compose. In, in order, in order to not be inverse, how many times does it have to fail? Once. In order to be inverse, how many times does it have to pass? Yeah. If, if I have more time, I don't want to go over this anymore. Let's just try to move on. Um, we've done tables. Okay, but here goes. That's one of these tables. Because now they're asking us. For a, for a table, what's a good function test? For a table, what's a good function test? Uh, the map, the mapping diagram. From the to the the x's and the y's. It looks like there's five relationships here. For the x's, we have everything we need. one up here, is that a function? Yeah. Yes, it is. Because every x has only one arrow leaving it. But then, if I, I didn't write the inverse, but assuming I would have written the inverse here, is the inverse a function? Is the inverse a function? Yeah, no, it's not. Why not? Because two inputs share the same output. Because the 8 it has two variables arriving. Okay, get better yet. What's another way that we call it when both a function and the inverse are both functions? If they're both functions, what do we call the original function? A one to one function. So, this first function that we have here, you know, is it a function? Yes, it is. But is it a one to one function? No, because of that. Because it has two arrows here to the same. It is a function, it's just not a one. Let's look at the graph. Okay? Is this a function? Does the graph represent a function? Yes or no? Yes or no? Why yes? Good. Yeah, you would pass a vertical line, please. I'll just abbreviate the other vertical line. Does the inverse represent a function? No. Why not? Good. It would fail. Horizontal line test. If I draw a horizontal line from here, it would fail it. And so, therefore, does the graph represent a one to one function? No, because the inverse is not a function. In order to be one to one, you have to pass both tests. The inverse is not a function. Uh, let's give it a quick way on the last page. Same thing. Is, uh, does this pass a um, does this pass a vertical line test? Yes. Does this pass a horizontal line test? Yes, it does also. Does it also pass a horizontal line test? So therefore, it is a one to one function. So tomorrow we'll be in the lab then. Can you switch it with the right? Can you switch it or not? Uh, yeah. The last one I have in the pocket.
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take you tomorrow next week. Okay. And